So for the last few months, Mayflash has been communicating with me about adding a turbo mode to their controller adapters. They've been giving me different options regarding button combinations to enable an alter turbo mode, as well as giving me updates as they made progress on this project of theirs. Instead of them locking this cool feature to a brand new standalone device, they're pushing a free firmware update to a bunch of their previous models of controller adapters. That's right, so if you own any of these devices, this free update is available to download right now. There are chapters available for you to skip through, and I've also made a document covering everything I'll be going over in this video, as well as an included graph to help if you're not using the same controller as me. To begin, I'll briefly touch on how to install this updated firmware to your device. I've covered this in greater detail in a previous video, which is linked below, but the quick explanation is as follows. Navigate to Mayflash's website, select your device, and download the newest firmware to your computer. Open the file and you'll be presented with this screen. Press and hold down the button on your adapter, plug it into your computer, and keep holding down the button until the software recognizes your device. Let go of the button and install the firmware. Once it's done, you can unplug your device and delete the firmware from your computer. And that's it! You're ready to start using Turbo Mode, as well as Auto Fire, which they added as a bonus feature. This is bonus? I'll be using an Xbox Series X controller on my Nintendo Switch for this video, but any controller or console that works with your adapter will be able to use Turbo, including wired controllers. Once your controller is connected and synced with the console of your choice, enter Turbo Mode by holding the Select button and D-Pad up for 3 seconds. The adapter's LED will flash quickly and your controller will vibrate, which means that you've successfully entered Turbo Mode. Now, you have a few options. To start, if you press the Select button and any of these buttons, it will map the button you press to be Turbo. You're now able to just hold that button down, rather than pressing it over and over. If you repeat this step by pressing the select button and the button of your choosing, you will map that button to be auto fire. This means that now when you press the button, you can let go and it will act like it's still being clicked over and over. To stop this, just press the button again. I'm sure you've already got some cool ideas for how you can use these functions, and I'll show some of my favorites later in the video, but before we get to that, here's a couple other things that you need to know. Just like how you pressed select and a button to map it to be a turbo, and then press them again to map it to be auto fire, Pressing select and the button of your choosing for a third time will remove all mappings associated with that button. Now when you use that button, it will act completely normal. When mapping a button to be a turbo or an auto fire button, it will by default click at 15 clicks per second. You can change this to either 5 or 25 clicks per second by pressing the select button in either D-pad left or D-pad right. Think of them as being in a line, so if you click to the left for 5 clicks per second, you'll need to click to the right twice to change to 25 clicks per second. Another cool thing is that you can map multiple buttons at once. So you can map multiple buttons to be turbo and multiple buttons to be auto fire at the same time. While I'm sure there are some cool use cases you can come up with for this, my favorite is jumbling together a bunch of buttons to do different things and then sending a video to your mom to trick her into thinking the controller is broken so she'll buy you a new one. But seriously, the fact that all of this is possible through a free firmware update is amazing and makes this the absolute best way to down- While in turbo mode, the select button doesn't function properly. This is an issue that Mayflash is aware of and wants to fix, but it is proving difficult if not impossible. Earlier in development, they also had an option to where the select button worked when using turbo mode, but every other button press had nearly one second of input delay. I recommended going with this other option, since that much input lag would be nearly unplayable, but if you'd rather have input delay, I apologize and I take full responsibility. But hold on, hold your horses, there's a workaround for this. When in turbo mode, pressing the select and home button together will act as if you press the select button. But depending on what game, controller, or console you're using, this may cause separate issues. To make it so the select button functions normally, just exit turbo mode. To do this, hold the select and D-pad down for 3 seconds. The adapter's LED will flash quickly and your controller will briefly vibrate, which means you've successfully exited turbo mode. Now, your select button will function completely normal, as well as all of your turbo buttons you save. Exiting turbo mode means that all of your turbo mode settings will be saved if you turn your console off and back on, and Mayflash's adapter can remember up to 8 controllers with individual turbo mappings at once. If you're still running into issues with your controller, or want to start over with your turbo settings, you can enter the cancel all turbo mode. After you exit turbo mode, hold the select and d-pad down again, but this time for 6 seconds. 
The LED indicator will flash and the controller will vibrate, letting you know that all the turbo mode mappings are erased. Now you're able to use the controller completely normally, and if you want to set up turbo mode, re-enter it using the steps I mentioned earlier. All in all, this is an amazing firmware update and I'm stoked to be able to use these tools without having to go buy a separate device. Huge props to Mayflash for them figuring out how to implement this on existing hardware. It's not perfect, but it's pretty hard to complain. They did a really great job and who knows, maybe they'll improve it more and release another free update. Speaking of Mayflash, they're working on a new device, the Magic X, which will be compatible with multiple different consoles, but it's mainly catered towards Xbox One and Xbox Series X users. I'm assuming they'll have some tricks up their sleeve, like their PS5-centered Magic S Ultimate, but time will tell. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe for future Mayflash-related product reviews and firmware updates, and if you had any questions that my video or linked documents couldn't answer, leave a comment. I read and respond to all of them and will always try to find you a solution. And if I can't figure it out for you, or you'd rather jump off a building than talk to me, reach out to Mayflash. They've got super friendly and helpful customer support. But anyways, as always, thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this quality, and until next time, take care.